So now in this video, we're going to look at the 555 timer wired as basically a light sensor, but with hysteresis. It's a Schmidt trigger. It's just naturally a Schmidt trigger. So this is kind of building on the last circuit and starting uh, future circuits where we use it in a stable mode where it kind of does the same thing. So in any case, you can see that right now the output's high. That's just the way I have these LEDs lit up. The red one will be high. Red tends to go with high better than green in my opinion. But in any case, we turn the lamp on. Now the green LED is on. It's harder to see, of course, but uh, we turn the light down. You see it's green uh, pretty nicely. So we went back to the same light level we had before. It's not red yet. We actually have to make it darker. So I'll cover with my finger the uh, light dependent resistor. And now we have the red LED. So before we actually get to the circuit, I want to talk about a uh, smoothing capacitor I have. We actually a decoupling capacitor that we have here. I have problems with this power supply. If I bump it, it does something to the uh, voltage at the rail. The capacitor absorbs it. It helps hold the voltage. So last video, I grabbed a 10 microfarad capacitor without doing any testing. And I figured I could use a lot lower value. But uh, I'm also going to take a 2.2. You can see they're physically the uh, same size. So this could probably handle the 2.2 more voltage. So uh, size usually, especially when you get to larger values, depends on the stored energy and the voltage that they can handle. But uh, in any case, we will put that to the rail. And we might even, we got a false triggering just by putting the capacitor in. And now we'll make it darker and go back. And you can see that if I tap the supply, we got to change when we shunt up. So I'm nowhere near the light sensor. It, it changed. So that's one reason why you might see a capacitor. I think it usually does say 10 microfarad. And in this case, I definitely need at least 10 microfarad, it looks like, at uh, the rail to uh, help smooth out uh, little glitches from the uh, power supply right there. So now the way that this works and we looked at some of this in the last video is that we have pin number two the trigger pin and pin number six the threshold pin tied together with uh, a jumper right there. It's making a direct connection. The trigger pin waits for one third of the power supply voltage so we have a light variable voltage divider right here. You can see on the positive side we have the light dependent resistor and then on the negative side it's coming over here we have a fixed resistor. I also have here this capacitor this is a 10 nanofarad very small value capacitor usually or often you'll see that on the schematic sometimes you won't that also helps stabilize things but uh, I don't need it so I'm just going to yank it out but I'll try to include it every once in a while just to uh, point out that often that is needed. So we'll zoom in a little bit. We get, we already saw pin two and pin six are tied together. And so we have a variable voltage divider here. Within the 555 timer, there's a, a fixed voltage divider. They might be five kilo ohm resistors, but the main thing is they are equal value resistors. And so you put them across power supply, as long as you don't uh, draw a load, from them or anything that will change them. You just monitor their voltages. You'll have one third voltage and then two thirds voltage across the uh, resistor in the middle. And so the trigger pin is waiting for one third of the power supply voltage. So in this case, when it's really dark, we'll have tons of resistance at the uh, light dependent resistor. This is a 10 kilo ohm resistor, by the way. And uh, we can change the sensitivity by changing uh, the resistor and also swapping which side they are on to determine whether it goes high or low at dark or brightness. But in any case, that goes to the negative. If we have tons of resistance at the light dependent resistor, then there'll be less resistance to the negative rail. It pulls the voltage down. And as we saw, then the red LED would come on so the output is high. If we lower the resistance by putting more light on it, we get up to the two thirds or higher. And that's when the threshold kicks in and that sets the output low once we cross that two thirds. And then we have to make it all the way back to one third to set it back. That's why there's hysteresis. So once we cross this line, we have all this room we can go. 
once we cross that line we have all this room that uh, we can go so it doesn't change at an exact spot so now if it's hard to see what's going on here I'll just pluck this quickly you can see we have the light dependent resistor right there to the uh, positive rail so right now all it's doing is uh, letting uh, voltage come here pin 6 and pin 2 do not let current go into them and no current comes out of them they just monitor the uh, voltage so it'll see the power supply voltage there and we put this is a 10 kilo ohm the red stripes to the left probably better to uh, put it this way you may not even be able to see the, the red stripe but uh, in any case there we go that is to the negative rail that helps pull it negative so that we get a fraction of the voltage basic voltage divider stuff other than the light dependent resistor its voltage changes and so we get a or its uh, resistance changes so we get a changing voltage and then for the LEDs we have just the basic polarity indicator uh, circuit in this case the uh, output if it is more negative which it is now you can see the green LED is lit up the short lead the cathode is to the output which this jumper brings us to and uh, the line lead the anode heads towards the positive side through a resistor I'm using a 1 kilo ohm resistor because this green LED is quite a bit brighter than the red LED with the same amount of current going through it so there we have it and then the red LED will take the long lead, the anode, that way we know the output is high because the anode is to uh, pin 3 right there. And uh, the other side of the LED, the cathode and the lower value resistor, go to the negative rail right there. So we'll just slap that right into there. Now we already saw the sensitivity with the 10 kilo ohm resistor. So I'm going to pluck that one right now and we're going to use a 1 kilo ohm resistor so there's a less resistance on the negative side so it's going to be easier to pull it negative negative. and there you can see I can do it with my finger now we have the opposite problem now it's harder to get it bright enough to set the green LED so I have my flashlight and I will just put light on the light dependent resistor and now you can see that it changed back right there and uh, so even with my finger it's bright enough to keep it from uh, going low with the flashlight but there you can see I can do it with my finger there or we could lower the light of course it's whatever light level falls on the light dependent resistor so there's a number of things we can do so I didn't feel like uh, drawing up a diagram for this it's kind of building on what we did with the bi-stable mode 555 timer and since we have these two pins together, the uh, A-stable mode 555 timer uses this to keep monitoring the voltage. The A-stable mode, though, keeps changing the value of a uh, capacitor. And uh, so the capacitor's voltage just keeps changing, bouncing back and forth, depending on uh, what the output is doing. And uh, you'll learn more about that. But it kind of works on these same principles. So hopefully, if you understand this, you'll understand those two other circuits better so we can also just uh, take a trim pot and do this manually so now there's nothing on the board you see both LEDs are on which uh, means the output may may not be outputting actually current can run through there or else the output is flipping back and forth so fast that uh, they are alternating in fact we can uh, yank the green LED okay the red one stayed on so I'm thinking that uh, the output is just erratic right now this is picking up uh, signals where it's going high and low automatically so we're gonna take the uh, light or the uh, the uh, trim pot here and put the middle pin which is the output and then the two other pins positive and negative rail this is a 10 kilo ohm trim pot and uh, value does not matter at all in this circuit and uh, actually center point is there so I usually like to point it the other way but let's leave it this way for now just realize this is the halfway point that's more a higher voltage that's a lower voltage we will grab the jumper there it's good to be able to get used to different uh, wiring situations so now see if I can not block too much light so that turned the output low right there when we went high enough and then we lower the voltage enough we get towards the negative rail then the red 
LED lights up. So whatever changes a voltage can be used to uh, wire up this uh, circuit, you know, uh, that's all that's looking at is a voltage. It doesn't care what is providing that voltage. It's just looking at the voltage. It doesn't take any current, you know, just like a little trickle or whatnot will slip through, of course. But for the most part, there's uh, no current being drawn from the uh, voltage divider. So you're getting an accurate voltage at those pins. And it's changing the output based on whether it's two-thirds or one-third of the power supply voltage. And uh, so that's uh, one of the main properties of the 555 timer. So just doing these little simple practice circuits will help you understand that a lot better. So thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next video.